All right, welcome to part one of a tutorial for how to speed run an any percent of Eco, the PS3 version. Today we're looking at the first segment from the start to the graveyard bench. Um, the goal for this is to prepare for a marathon challenge where you run all three Eco games, e team Eco games, Eco, Shadow of the Colossus, and the uh, Last Guardian. I'm trying to uh, come up with a run here that's got some risk to it, but not a whole lot, and is doable in about a hundred, a uh, hundred, in about an hour and forty-five minutes of game time. So real time, finishing about under two hours, about an hour and fifty minutes. I'll be discussing different strats you can do along the way. Um, some which I think are you have to do to get this time, and others which are optional if you want to shave even more time off and go for a good uh, time on the leaderboards. So, let's um, get out of this little screen here and get started. Starting with a new game, of course, just start mashing the start button to quit all the cutscenes here. And um, immediately we're going to be working on something that happens a lot in this game, which is coming out of cutscenes where you actually have a little bit of time that you can move before it seems like the cutscene fully ends. And also if you're in a standing position, you go faster by jumping rather than just uh, walking. So we're going automatically going to try and jump up and to the right here as soon as possible. I'm just spamming my jump button. Whoop! And there we go. We're going up the stairs. Whee! Pull the lever, Kronk. Skip a cutscene right there and leap off the stairs. That was not a good leap. <laughs> okay, that's fine though. There's I'm not going for great speed with this. So there's actually um, two different routes you can take from here besides the obvious long route of running all the way down the stairs. Um, some people like to take a couple steps down and then jump over the ledge. And you'll notice that if, if you do it this way, um, you don't make a uh, sound when you when you fall. It does so you can actually make it out this that door you just opened a little bit faster, but um, from pulling, so, sometimes this angle is kind of hard to get and you'll end up bonking. But from pulling, if you're like moving straight down and you jump almost right away, yeah, you'll fall. But that's only a tiny bit of time difference there, and so I like to do that and then just run right into the next room. Second room. That was a little late. You want to jump. Um, what you want to do is like jump and then jump again right away to get up top quickly. But uh, again, this isn't that important. Wow, trying to explain this makes me off my rhythm. Hold on, let me get out of the room and try this again. All right, you're in a speed run. Focus. I'm still going to mess it up. <laughs> there you go. And then with the chains, um, you'll notice from all the speed runs, it's a lot faster to jump off the back of a chain uh, this way than it is to like swing and get your momentum going. So get used to that. Push left as this cutscene opens and you'll fall to the left instead of falling straight forward and that way you're able to just start going right up this ladder. And this part's kind of long and boring, but we're just going to be using the call a lot because you go a little bit faster here. Just watch his feet, and then watch him pick up a little bit when you make that call. The animation, it's its not that much difference, but over the course of the entire game, every time you can do this, it really helps out. And it just kind of gets you in a rhythm, you know, of something to do. Uh, it's also good to like pick a song that keeps you in rhythm. I like <laughs> I like the Banana Boat song, Deo. So he's doing Deo. Daylight come and we want to go home jump right. Oh, that's not a good jump. So this one takes a little bit of practice, but you want to jump when your feet hit right here and snag the chain. Um, let's see if the camera angle adjusts again. All right. No, it didn't, but that's what you're trying to do. And then when he climbs up to the top, that'll be another instance of your standing and it's faster to jump to get going again instead of just running. Now we're going to wait for the uh, these pillars we're running by. Well, it's not really pillars, but these edges. Once we get to the two that are next to each other, that's where the next cutscene is. So we'll start mashing start right away. And I'm going to show you what happens when you fall out this window without pushing anything. 
then I'm going to show you the right way to do it. So I'm not pushing any buttons, just holding my controller loosely in my hand. And here I fell to the ground, which means I'd have to run around at these weird camera angles, uh, hop up here, and then climb back up. But let's go back through that window again. And this time we're going to be pushing up on the joystick as we come out the window and watch the difference. pushing up on the control stick and instead I land here and from here well, that wasn't a good example but from here you can make jumps it takes a little bit of practice I'm still not a hundred percent at it um, and so you you're saving yourself a little bit of time you should be able to make that jump without oofing that's what I call when you hit your tummy there uh, it's not too hard to do those it saves a little bit of time coming out that window I should have been pushing to the left but I was too busy explaining the other part all right, now here you want to jump a little early so you don't hit that cliff on the other side. Jumping starting again, jumping here, and we're going back down now. So um, that first jump, like where you make that big fall, make sure you're not too close to the window or you might accidentally catch the window when you jump and then that'll lose you a few seconds. And if you jump too late, you'll catch the other side and you'll have to drop, drop down to land. So, now it's time to rescue the princess. Here's another thing I'd like to explain right now, which is um, to help me run straight, a lot of times I'm just watching his feet and I'm trying to stay on the same tiles. The camera angle is going to constantly change and so it's sort of a challenge to yourself. Can I stay on those same tiles as the, as the camera angle moves around? Try and jump right at this thing. No, I didn't do that right. If you want to go super fast, you want to try and get a jump right around there that makes you um, leap over the top. But what I just did was my backup strategy, which is if you bonk your knees here, just do another jump right away and you'll be right up at the top. It'll save you a little bit of time. Let's see if I can get it though. Yeah, that's the fastest way right there. All right. Rescue the girl. Let's, let's try and simulate a really bad fight here where he, um, I want him to scrunch down. Come on, scrunch down on me. Oh, come on, man. Scrunch. Oh, well, he's gone. If uh, sometimes they'll like squeeze into the ground, I should skip this scene. Um, sometimes they'll like squeeze into the ground. And when they do that, you can actually still hit them with your uppercut, which is your third swing, like one, two. One. You have to be moving forward to do it. And when you do that, that third motion will will hit them up off the ground. So if there's if they're if he's really trolling you and he's like squished into the ground, uh, get a good distance away from him and, and knock him up. Usually you can do that fight pretty quickly though. And right, now I'm just gonna hold Gorda's hand while I do all of this. I found this to be the the faster way. Some people like to just sometimes she'll actually hop up right with you. Um, and you'll like clip into each other. Alright, don't let go of her hand here or she will run to this bridge. Or she'll run to the bench and just be like, hey, let's take a rest. So make sure you don't let go of her hand or you'll lose a few seconds there. <laughs> Running again. Not in, not many not any tiles to look at with my feet for practice. So I, it's uh This one's a little harder for me to stay straight on. I just try and stay right in the middle. Alright, Yorda. Door number two. And that's the end of our first segment. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's talk about this next room. Gosh, there's so many little things I could mention, but for now we're just gonna leave it at. We're gonna leave her up at the top of the steps and hope she doesn't chase any any um, doves. Yep, there's a dove right there. She likes to chase them. Gonna push this block out of the way. Skip this cutscene, and then from here you can actually jump onto the ledge. It saves a lot of time. Come down to the bottom of the steps and call her. Middle of the way through, she'll trigger um, a cinematic, but she keeps running during it, which is pretty cool. She usually sees that guy and runs right to you, but I've seen her chase pigeons all over this room, so be ready for anything. The good news is shadows are terrible at grabbing her when they're chasing you up or downstairs. So that's good to know. 
Usually if you can make it to stairs when you're in a scene, unless they're in front of the, in front of you just waiting for you, they're not going to grab her whether you're going up or down. They'll, they'll try, but they won't. All right, here comes a really famous skip. We're going to skip a whole lot of stuff that we have to drag Yorda through. And the main reason we get to do this is because this door is closed and we're going to keep it closed. And Yorda can't go out this way. She's kind of trapped in this little pocket. And we're going to be doing puzzles that take us up to this trainway right here um, without carrying her along. And it's going to make things a lot faster. So we'll be calling again because she can't actually follow us, but it makes us run faster. And again on this chain, I'm jumping from the other direction because it's a lot faster to leave. I stop pushing up when I see my horns hit the uh, floor there. Just a little visual cue. I'm not sure if I described that very well. And now we're just hopping upstairs. And to do this trick, it was something that only the Japanese runners had been doing before now. But hopefully we all can do it. I call it flick jumping. You just flick the joystick forward instead of holding it down. If you hold it down and mash the thing, see he kind of stumbles. It's a little bit slower, so do a flick jump. Now normally, speedrunners will leap from right about here and imagine they're trying to land on this like invisible line along with the train. But it's a silly... It's the thing about this this jump right here is it's really easy to get, but it's also really easy to go a little farther than the track or a little closer. And either one of those will kill you. <laughs> so if you're, uh, if you're starting a long marathon run through all three games, this is definitely the safest way to get down there. And it didn't lose you that much time. But if you want to practice just for swag, you can run back up this ladder. <laughs> I'm not going to do it right now because I know d certainly during this tutorial it'd be one of the times that I miss. I probably miss one in one in six or one in seven times. Anyways, run all the way back to these stairs to get, ugh, hate that camera, to get the camera back in gear and you can practice it again if you just want to kind of practice doing this jump over and over again. And you'd leap like about there at that angle and that would get you to it. All right. Um... Gosh, my brain is thinking of so many things I could share, but for now we'll just keep it at that. Uh, I'll keep calling her so I run a little faster. This one is super annoying with the camera when you when you call her. Um, you kind of have to get used to that. Just, you don't run, run off the track. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Leaving on a midnight train to Yorda. Ah, hi, Yorda. She's right below us. See, all of this is kind of like one big room without any loads. So even though we're further away from her, nothing is going to grab her at this time. Quick jump. Get up. Try and get to where you can do uh, those jumps without grabbing. And that one as well without... Yeah, just follow that. <laughs> Alright. So that just takes some time to kind of get into a rhythm of learning when to do the jumps right. But... You want to try and not have to land and climb up anything right there. If possible. If you mess it up, that's not going to kill a run where you're trying to get 145 time. Mainly just doing this skip alone is saving us tons of time. All of this stuff is stuff we'd normally have to take Yorda through. Instead we are... Um, she's skipping out of it. Okay. Now I'm going to show you something really annoying. Watch this. There I am. I'm just trying to get on this crane, but the thing senses that it's a ledge. So there are two things you could do here. You could hold down the uh, interact button, which is the circle, which will make you walk instead, and then you calmly get down to that. Boring. Or, let's say you start it over here, right? So you run to this exact line, you wait for the camera, and then you use the down the D button, the down D-pad button, instead of the controller. And that way you can just leap safely without worrying about your angle, keep holding the D button, until you've gone down one thing and then um, just hit the X button release three times um, and that'll get you to the floor much faster than crawling down it. So we're going to do several D-pad jumps which take things that would be kind of high risk. Um, this is another cutscene. I didn't skip it fast enough but that's okay. And now we're going back to get our girl. We're already holding hands. I think I, think I have a chance with her. I mean yeah I have horns but you know, she's a luminescent being of light, so we're kind of an odd couple. 
You know, this little area right here is a great example of showing you one of the frustrations when you're running with Yorda, which is if you're not right in the middle of a path, it's really easy to like bump these corners and sometimes you, you bump one hard enough and, and she slows you down. Um, <laughs> so these, these corners, they stick out more than you'd think. And if she clips one, sometimes she'll let go of your hand and she does she tends to really want to do that when you're ch being chased by shadows so this is a good place to practice trying to run right in the middle of the path so you don't hit these corners which actually stick out further than they seem to so that's a tip to remember throughout this entire run <laughs> all right we basically skipped that fight uh, now i let go of her because she doesn't need to be with me for this All right, so now we're headed to knock down the chandelier, and um, there's not much to be said about this. I just I have a little visual cue that I do when I um, work, try and hit the chandelier, and that is um, as soon as I get to where my body is kind of lined up with the with the um, edge of the chandelier, that's when I make my jump towards the center of it, and I try and time my swing to hit the chain right as I'm hitting the ground, and sometimes it works on the first try. Like that. Okay, I'm gonna skip this scene and start pushing up right away. That way we're running before <laughs> cinematic kind of looks like it ends. And um, here we come to another place where holding down the circle makes a difference because we could run down these uh, windy stairs here. There's these windy stairs that go all the way around this thing. Here, I'll go ahead and show them to you. I'm sure you've seen them. Yeah, these windy stairs but it's actually faster to drop down right here. So let me just show you what happens again. If I'm walking, oh, I guess I was walking slow enough. If I'm walking fast, Yorda, you're in my way. I can't show them what I'm trying to show them. Okay, hold on a second. Yorda's trolling us. Let me get back up. Yorda, get out of the way. Here, have a seat, relax. Okay. So sometimes if you're moving fast towards a ledge, you'll do like this more wavy animation. Whoa, and that's that's uh, a little bit slower. But if you're holding the, the circle so that you're just walking, you'll calmly move down. Now, if I push down so that I'm all the way at this edge and I drop from here, I will die. I want to try and be all the way towards the entrance before I drop to make sure I land on this ledge. Hold the circle again, calmly don't come down again, and get this bomb. Guys, we're halfway here. I'm feeling good about this. All right, so from here, we're going to turn kind of uh, in this direction and do three jumps, walk some, and then another jump to light the bomb. Three jumps, walk some to eyeball it, jump right there so that hopefully the wick hits the, hits the candle and lights it. And then from there, if you want to work on trying this strat, which it took me a while to get, you can hop up, see? You can hop back twice, turn, and throw it immediately. And the bomb should explode either right before or right after it hits this pole or slightly to this side or slightly to this side. And it is a little bit, it's pretty forgiving. As long as you timed it right, you should be able to get that to explode. You'll be way over here and uh, you can skip the cinematic and then just run right back through those through this thing and if there's smoke so that it's hard to see your way out you can always use that um, torch as kind of a guide for where you're supposed to stand oh i didn't know she could get grabbed there that's interesting i was taking way too long all right gotta go rescue yorda never seen that happen before i don't even know where they're gonna take her oh game over Maybe? Wow. Fascinating. Come on, guy. So this is never going to happen. I was just spending way too much time in that room. Okay, I'm just going to take her with me. Come on, Yorda. Usually we'll just leave her up here. Ugh. Oh my gosh. Let's try again. Wow. Live and learn. Okay. That'll never happen. 
You'll be in and out before you know it. Um, come here, Yoda. In and out before you know it. Um, yeah, I'll just leave her in there. All right. Yorda! If, sometimes if she's close to a door, you can actually... Um, she'll show up with you, and that can actually save some time as opposed to crawling her across. All right, I'm going to let go of you now. So I explained the one way to do it. This is the safe way if you don't want to worry about tossing. So the way they intend for you to do it is to set the bomb down, go in like the uh, stick, and then bring the bomb over. But there's a way that's still a little bit faster than that, which is pretty easy to do, and that's to hop, light it, uh, <coughs> light it, hop over here, and then just stand here and wait for it to go off, and it will knock you backwards. Skip the cinematic. It's already knocked you towards the door a little bit. Get up and run out. Believe it or not, that's faster, and that bomb never kills you. So we've now made the way for Yorda to make it down to the courtyard. And now we're just going to practice what we were talking about earlier, which is um, trying to run straight so we could do our best job of avoiding shadows, especially on straightaways where there are no stairs or when it, the uh, shadow lands right in front of you on stairs. So don't let go of her hand here or you'll start doing this weird slide down the, um, down the ridge there. I don't know what to call that. And uh, then you'll have to run back and get her. That's kind of annoying. This is, a f this is a really hard one to stay right in the middle and stay straight. That camera angle just turns all the way around. And zap. We're going to use this mechanic a lot. Using the door to kill the shadows. She's electric. She's got a family full of eccentrics. She doesn't speak my language. But I'm hoping she'll stick with me. You have to do this really straight to not get grabbed here. Um, I'm kind of hoping I do get grabbed, that me talking is going to distract us a little. Because you need to be prepared to run her over to that shadow right there if she gets um, taken. Um, it looks like I went a little slow, but I confuse them. A lot of times one of them tries to grab her right on the stairway there. And you have to run on the left edge of the stair not to get grabbed. But we made it here with no incidents. So that's two sprints in a row we had to do, and it's good practice for later. Again, here I'm standing, and I'm going to jump right away to get out of it. And we're through the door before I can even fully see myself. Skip another cutscene! And here we get to one of the most annoying parts of this game, which is, it's really hard to be, like, here I am pushing interact, right? And I can't grab this stupid thing until I'm right here. And if I'm pushing forward to try and grab it, it might waste some animation, like... You'll see people accidentally do that when you need to pull it forward. Um, every speed run I've seen uh, s starts with this one, goes here, goes up to this one, and then back over here. Oh, I should say the PS3 speed runs, but I believe I saw someone doing the PS2 run who started with this one um, because you start about right here, and you actually travel a little bit less distance. So if you go here and then back and then left and then up, and then up to the next one, and then over. It saves you a little bit of time, you know, given the fact that uh, doing these, catching these things is kind of annoying. But if you start holding the uh, thing down a little early, you'll go up slowly to it. Uh, again, it's just, it's hard to, this is like a little area that you'll lose a couple seconds because it's so frustrating to um, learn how to do the approach just right. See here, even now I'm struggling with it. I think I'm just going to be quiet and let you watch it from here. Oh, you're just following. Good. This is a good time. Try and get a call off on this last one if you can before the cutscene ends. Just spam the R1 button. Nope, didn't get it off. If you do, then she might come. But she's close enough this time. Sometimes she's a little bit further down. Sometimes she's trying to give you a clue to help her. <laughs> All right. Now we come to one more explosion, one more bomb trick, similar to the other one. And there's a couple different ways to do it. I'll explain both of them and then do the one that I like doing more. But it's really, it's still kind of easy to miss. If you let go of Yorda before this point and you call her, she gets confused and she kind of runs backwards. So instead we are... 
we were waited till that corner to let go over. All right, I'm gonna pick up a bomb, and the bomb is supposed to blow up that. Uh, oh, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, that area, that structure right there. Of course, the intended way is to run all the way over, drop the bomb down, light your stick, run back, and blow it up. But um, you can light it from this one and then bounce it off the, f like bounce it from standing about right here at this angle off the fence for swag points. It'll land around there and blow up. And as it's bouncing towards there, you want to run about right here and call Yorda. And then during the cutscene, she'll run to you, the cutscene of it exploding. Or if you, uh, if you want, it's a little bit easier to light it uh, angle-wise in this corner. And then you just kind of move just a little bit and, and uh, throw it at this angle. And it should either land about right here or bounce back to right about there. But this is really easy to mess up, um, even though it's easy to do, again, kind of like that jump. So I wouldn't be surprised if I have to do this more than once. No, that's good. I should have called her earlier. She tends to back away right there because she really doesn't want to be near that explosion. All right, and now we've made it to the graveyard. Yay! I always forget to skip that cup scene. And this little section right here is a pain. We'll talk about this in the next video. But let's just say um, if you're not just trying to speedrun Eco, but you're trying to speedrun all three and you don't want to do saves, this is a really easy place for things to go really wrong and you to have to start over. So it's worth the save, because you'll only lose a couple of minutes. Um, yeah, so it's worth the save. And at this bench, when you see your save time, you want it to be... This is going to be an awful save time, but where's my... Yeah, this is a graveyard of 1402. You want it to be around 1430 um, t to, to uh, make the uh, 15 minutes of real time. I'm guessing this is going to be closer to an hour and a half. <laughs> How long has this video been? <laughs> we'll find out. Yep, 25 minutes. Okay. Uh, I'm debating on doing this whole thing again without talking, but there's plenty of speedruns out there that do everything I was just talking about. This was just kind of a step-by-step -step to work through my mechanics for it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and thanks for watching. We'll pick up here next time.